Hey guys, welcome to the video. Remember a couple of videos back when I said I was contemplating possibly getting a metal cutting chop saw? Well, I did. In this video, it's going to be a uh, tool show and tell and I'm going to walk you through the chop saw that I got. So when the saw showed up, I think um, immediately what, I, I don't know if I'm going to say impressed me, but gave me a warm, fuzzy feeling was when I p went to pick the box up off my front porch, I about broke my back because it was so heavy. The reason that it's so heavy is because pretty much everything on this saw is cast. I thought it would have more plastic on it, but almost everything, like the base here, the fence, the jaw, everything, even up here, like this guard, this is all metal, this is all cast metal, this here is all cast metal, I mean, the hinge bracket here is all cast, the arm here is all cast, all the hardware down here is metal and cast, um, the only thing that's really plastic is this handle up here, the, the on-off switch, this handle here is plastic. The uh, end cap on the motor is plastic. Pretty much that's about it. Almost everything else on it is metal. Which, uh, you know, it's just nice because it makes you uh, feel like this saw, this saw is going to be around for a long time. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But that's the uh, initial impression that you get. Is that this thing's going to be with you for a while. And if you've, watched, uh, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you guys know that... Uh, I'm pretty particular with my tools and I try and keep them for a very long time. So that gives me a good warm fuzzy feeling that this saw is going to be with me for a long time. Let me go over a couple of features that it has that I liked. Um, one thing about a saw like this is I'll be using it for a lot of miter cuts and setting up miters on the fence is pretty simple. It's got this handle that you just crank back. And then there's a, a pivot bolt right here that you just grab out of this. It's got this Allen wrench that fits into a, a holder so it stays with the saw at all times. You just put this in that, loosen it up. You set the fence to whatever you want. Snug this back down. Give the handle a turn. And really without having to go get any special tools other than a protractor, you're good to go. There is a little graduated scale on the fence, but really if you guys are doing some precision miter cuts, and this is the same thing with my bandsaw, you need to actually set the fence with a, a protractor and going off the, uh, the blade there. So when the blade comes down, you can get a pretty good angle on it there to uh, measure the angle off the fence. It also has what I just kind of thought was a nice little feature is it's got this little metal um, tab, I guess, so that when you pull the handle down, this locks in and engages and it holds the, uh, the saw down. It just makes it real easy to put the saw down. Whereas I've had some other chop, chop saws where there's like a little piece of metal that you had to slide up in there. Or I had one where there was a little chain that you had to affix. This one's nice and easy. Then it also has an adjustable bolt right here. When you pull the saw down, this piece of metal comes in contact with the screw head and adjusting this allows you to set how far down the blade goes, which is just a nice feature to have so that if you have this on a base and you don't want the blade to go down through here too far, you can adjust that. Then another thing I, I it has that I thought was nice was it's got a real nice, easy to engage button 
when you press this in and you rotate the motor a little bit, it locks into the motor shaft, holds it in place so that you can change the blade. Now again, changing the blade, everything on, everything on here is all cast. You grab the same Allen wrench that you use to adjust the fence. This Allen wrench is pretty much set up to fit everything. Loosen this screw a little bit. You don't have to take it out, just loosen it up. Slide that out of the way. Then again, the same Allen wrench fits into the bolt to loosen this nut up to take the blade off. The blade that's in here right now is a, a, a general metal cutting, see it says there, steel blade. I actually did talk to Evolution Tools and um, you know told them what I was cutting. And they said this blade would do just fine for mild steel, like ERW, Electroweld, things like that. But then they also recommended a stainless steel blade for cutting DOM and chromoly. So I got a, uh, a stainless steel blade while I was at it. So what I'll do is for most of my cuts, I'm going to use the, the steel blade that comes with it. But I'm when, in, when I'm doing DOM, or I haven't done any chrome molly yet, but if I do get into some chrome molly, I'll use this for the chrome molly as well. Now I've been using the saw for about a um, little over a week now, and I've, I've actually made quite a few cuts with it. Before I did this video, I wanted to get comfortable with it and find out what I liked and what I possibly don't like on it. It is a metal cutting saw. It slings a lot of uh, little metal filings around. It should probably be used outside if you have a shop or, or whatever you have. Um, in my situation, I've got the one stall garage where I do my fabrication. I can't really, I need a saw like this set up all the time. I need to be able to walk up to it and make some cuts, then go do some fabrication, maybe make a couple other cuts, make some fabrication. I can't have this saw so that every time I need it, I need to set it up. I can't have it set up anywhere in my garage because I don't have space for that and it makes a mess. So every time you, if I just had it like sitting out in my garage, every time I used it, I would have to do a thorough cleanup. So I have it set up in my basement. I'll put it over in its spot here in a minute. I've got a spot on my bench over here that I set up for it where I've got power. And then down in the corner, I've got a little shop vac. So after I use it, I can clean things up. You can see I've got some, uh, I made some white backing there so that nothing can go under the shelves. And I'll show you when I set the saw up there, I've got some side pieces that I put up to also help contain all the filings. And then every so often after I've been using it, I just take the shop vac out, clean things up um, to keep it from being too messy. But this way I have it set up all the time. It's always ready to go. So if I need to make a couple of cuts, I can just come down here Boop, 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 make the cuts, go back upstairs, continue fabricating. But do that at your own uh, at your own risk because it is, number one, it's noisy, so anybody in the house is going to hear it. Number two, um, it does sh throw metal filings all over the place, so you need to be cognizant of that. And I'm going to do a little test cut for you with a piece of inch and a half 095 Electro Weld. Um, I've been cutting tons of this stuff with it, so I just want you guys to see how it cuts. All right, that's the piece I just cut. It's a very, very clean cut. The piece is warm, but it's not it's not hot at all. Um, you could you could start welding on this right away. The edges are very clean. I have been running a file on the edges just to make them a little bit nicer, but it gives you um, pretty much work ready cuts. So in a nutshell, that's the saw. Um, the reason I'm doing a little tutorial on it is because um, you're gonna see me using it all the time because now that I've just been using it for a week. I already love having it in my wheelhouse of tools, mainly because it's uh, it's fast. It's just fast. It's so fast making cuts compared to my bandsaw that it's um, 
it's saving me valuable time. I mean, I work a full-time job. When I come home and want to do some filming or some fabrication, I've, you know, I'm seriously limited on time, as I'm sure most of you guys are. This saw makes cuts quickly and it makes them accurately. So I've been able to just take my measurements, figure out my angles, come down here, rip a bunch of pieces, carry those pieces upstairs, and spend most of my time welding and fabricating, which really is what I want to be doing. With these types of saws, the blades are consumable. You need to do everything you can to extend the life on those blades because they're, they're very expensive. With all the cuts and everything I've done so far on this blade, it's showing no signs of wear. It's still cutting like brand new. I'm, I'm treating it well. I'm clamping the pieces in there very securely. I haven't had any pieces dislodge at all. And when I bring the saw down, I'm keeping um, very light pressure on it. I'm really just letting the blade do its thing and just kind of pull down through itself. Um, and I think if you do that, these blades will actually last a very long time. We'll see, but I haven't really incurred any abuse on this blade as of this point. So that's it, guys. I just wanted to show you the saw because it's working out so well for me. Um, if you guys are trying to do some of the stuff that I'm doing, um, might want to consider getting a saw like this because it's, um, it's a nice solid unit and I think it's a serious time saver. So as always, thanks for watching the video. I hope these videos are helping you guys, getting you out there, working on stuff, and uh, just having a good time in your shop, whatever that may be. And hopefully I see you on the next video. Take care.